What do you want to be going to Lourdes for anyway? I always wanted to go there. If you go out that door, don't bleed and bother coming back. Miracles happen there. He could speak. So this was a very sweet movie. And, um, you know, it celebrated a lot of different things. But one of the big things um, that I know it, you know, celebrates was family and marriage and motherhood. Can you explain kind of the motivation, um, you know, with that? Well, they all had stories to tell about about children, uh, some darker than others. And uh, uh, they uh, that was, I guess, a driving force um, uh, in the in the in the drama itself. Uh, the whole idea of uh, of um, of giving birth and uh, what a child is and uh, how you deal with the child. I'm thinking now of the of, of the of the child who doesn't speak uh, and. Uh, you know how how you want your children to be perfect, and and you know when they're not perfect, what do you do? And then there was the Eileen character who who's got a house full of kids. Uh, um, she can hardly tell how many grandkids she's got. Um, you know we really uh, l- like that idea. On the other hand, you had um, the Maggie Smith character whose son only had w- one child who died and possibly committing suicide. So. Um, so it is all about family for good or bad. Uh, and um, uh, I, I found that uh, exciting to, to focus on. Um, and uh, I think if, uh, and also um, the women at that time, uh, that was their working class women of that period in that place. Um, that was largely their experience of life was bringing up children. Um, you know, they, they didn't get out to work uh, 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 and so there was a, the focus is very much on how they deal with family life, and uh, and I love the idea of them getting away from the family as well. At the beginning of the film, when they they sort of escape, if you like, to Lourdes. So Lourdes is is partly a place of pilgrimage and a spiritual journey for them, possibly, uh, but it certainly is a a holiday as well. It's just a, a way to get out of the house, get out from under the kids. So. So the family thing is always there, and then when when the the scene with Stephen Ray and he's doing the shopping, and the the daughter comes out and 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 then the, they and he's made the stew for the kids and and all of that. So you know it's all about it's a very hard thing to dramatize. You see it so often in films. Uh, the film starts with the suburban house. You go inside. The father's going off to work. He's got the briefcase. Uh, the mother is trying to uh, get the, the food on the kid uh, on the table, get the kids out to school, and um, it was. Uh, I, I'm not saying I was conscious of it not be not to be like that, but it, it was good that it wasn't like that, um, because it does. It, it, family life can be treated a little familiarly in film and become a little bit predictable. No, but I think you did a good job on that. No, I. You know, I'm I'm a mom, so I understood that. But I understood the element of um, grief. I lost my mom last year. And so can you talk about, you know, that's a very big theme in this movie is grief uh, and what, you know, she has to come to terms with and, and all those things. Well, that's that's one of the, the key scenes uh, where uh, the Dolly character uh, talks about, uh, well, they, they all talk about their, their, ch- their children, uh, from the Maggie Smith character, that's the scene the four of them in a room together, mm. and uh, and and uh, the Chrissy character talks about the abortion, um, and uh, Dolly, uh, but she's inspired by Dolly's uh, ad- uh, admission, uh, and uh, and the, the grief is in the room, uh, the grief at the at the at at, uh, at the at the loss of of a child, um, however, the child is lost and. Uh, at the end of the end of that scene, uh, it rests very much on Maggie Smith, and Maggie Smith is thinking about the loss of her her son uh, all those years ago. But she's also also thinking about the loss of her grandchild, which uh, the the Laura Linney character is just, you know, that actually is what she says is your grandchild. She's talking about, and um, so that is one of my uh, one of the most interesting scenes in the film that uh, I think, and. Um, Yes, that 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 has a, a lot of grief uh, on the surface or underlying it, and in some ways to help come with comedically as well. Um, we managed to get a laugh out of it, um, 
at at Dolly's um, ignorance about uh, uh, about what to do when you don't want a child, which the older women, uh, oddly, are the are the ones. It it you know Dolly would have learned about this from from her mother, uh, you know, overheard these kinds of conversations and took them seriously, but they were probably never meant seriously. And the older women then look at Dolly and think. Um, where could she get all that from? Why would she believe all that? But she was, uh, you know, I think when you're having a child, you're you're in a different emotional uh, uh, condition. So I think uh, things are received very differently. And uh, so that was interesting about her. But uh, but it carries us into the uh, the last act of the film, which is about um, you know what happens to the children and um, and how you deal with uh, the aftermath. It just it uh, that scene sets up the end, really. And what does you know? What did it mean to you? What does Lords mean to you? Because you know you must have had a personal feeling to take on this project. Um, well, I have to say, on the face of it, if somebody says to you, "There's a film here about uh, three women who go to Lourdes looking for a miracle," I mean that's enough to get you going because it's it's a uh, you know what what could go wrong. Uh, and but uh, Lourdes has loomed large in uh, in, in in Catholic uh, uh, culture, but particularly in Ireland, I think um, we grew up um, with the idea of pilgrimage uh, very fo- very strongly there. Not just pilgrimages to Lourdes, but pilgrimage pilgrimage to other places and some within Ireland. Uh, one place in particular in Ireland where. Um, the Virgin was to have a, was to have a period in the nineteenth century. Uh, is is uh, was a a place that my family and I and my my siblings we used to all get packed into the car, and we used to ha- all have to go off for this every once a year uh, to to go to the shrine in in uh, Knock in County Mayo, and uh, and Lourdes was talked about a lot. There was always a member of the family that was uh, gone to Lourdes, was going to Lourdes, so. Um, and uh, we were, you know, we were told the the, the stories, the miracles, and, and 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 all of that. And my 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 family did go, my mother and father did go at one point, uh, and um, it was a very a very very important uh, trip for them. It's the first time they'd been abroad, so it was um, kind of exotic as well. Which is why I have uh, when uh, Kathy Bates is is leaving, she says to her child. Our grandchild, she says, um, "I'm off. I'm going to France." And the kid says, "I thought you were going to Lourdes." And that was how Lourdes always loomed in the imagination. It was something exotic and way out there, and it wasn't to do with a country. It was just this this place, <laughs> well, a heavenly place, where you went to have a spiritual experience. The act fact that it was in a country was kind of surprising <laughs> to her. And um, so, yeah, Lourdes was. Um, a special place always uh, it was always special the the thing about the, the, it being disneyland and you know uh, is something that i really only came across um you know much later it was it was a very very holy place and to be treated with great respect uh so that would have been my instinct um i, I need a foreigner against anything that it professes um and you know and if you talk about miracles i mean they, they they have pretty high standard uh, in Lourdes. Uh, the investigation that takes place when they've got a potential miracle on their hands is pretty forensic and lasts for years and, and it involves a lot of independent medical people, people who are not religious. So it, it's, it's, it's a strange thing. But I think it's an interesting thing, just, just kind of a conversational thought that I had was, you know, America, we don't seem to do these, we don't emphasize these pilgrimages or, or kind of, you know, but, you know, internationally you have the Camino and you have Lords and you have these things. And so it's nice to reflect, you know, watch these movies that kind of reflect on that, that more spiritual, you know, more faith oriented, um, you know, to get you out of your, we're so into this materialism here in the States that, um, well, it, the that. and all this stuff. Yeah, of course, there's that. And um, and when spirituality is talked about in America, it quite often comes from extreme points of view. Uh, there was um, I was talking to a woman yesterday, 
uh, and uh, oh no, I didn't. It was a, it was a woman I, I've read about uh, who who writes on fate, and she uh, she was asked, uh, are you, "You were you were part of the evangelical movement," and she said, "Oh yeah, that's uh, I don't not anymore because it's become too politicized." So uh, so I'm not because I don't want to be uh, I want to be seen to be in, in control of my faith and uh, my attitude towards faith and not have it taken over by some some political driven by some political thing and uh, I thought that was interesting and probably quite a lot of people do feel that in America that their their spirituality is is a, you know you have to sort of join this group or this church and there's always there's always something I, I'm not saying that the Catholic Church wasn't like that. You know, my experience, the Catholic Church was very <laughs> clear about how you lived your life. Uh, it might be a bit more liberal now. Well, it is a little bit more liberal now, but in those days, our 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 world was was uh, very very circumscribed by Catholic um, culture. Um, so the American thing, I take your point. It's very interesting. All right. Yeah, you, you know, this year, but there was always New York. <laughs> What's that? You don't have a place of pilgrimage uh, here, but there's always New York to mammon. <laughs> um, you know, you've done a great job, though, balancing these heavy themes with, you know, some comedy. And I know, you know, Maggie Smith, she she does that, right? Like she's an actor who can portray that kind of comedy, even with a straight face. Right. And Kathy Bates, you know, Kathy Bates is a little bit different in her comedy, but she does that, too. But can you talk about. Um, that, you know, showing a little comic relief within the midst of these heavy themes. Yeah. Um, in the earlier drafts, the, the family, when you came back to the family, for example, it was a, it was a, um, the chaos was so massive that as soon as the women left the house and, and it, it wasn't funny. Uh, I didn't find it. So we tried to make that uh, um, quietly amusing and not particularly uh, aren't the men stupid entirely uh, sort of thing, and uh, and my experience of uh, let's just take for example my mother and and my and her and her siblings my aunts, um, when they, they were all very religious, but they were always very funny uh, and and a bit um, uh, skeptical, uh, not well they were a bit skeptical anyway, but a bit sort of. Um, let's not get too pious here. Let's not take ourselves too seriously. And they would say some really funny things about priests and bishops and, and what was going on. It was different when they had to act. Like when they, if they had to, if the priest came around to the house or anything, which is quite a common thing, uh, they were, they would never, they would never, you know, they would be very, very, they'd be very pious. Uh, but um, outside of that, they could be, they could be, You'd wonder sometimes how religious they are uh, with the the jokes they would tell or whatever. My mother, my mother used to tell this. I'm not going to tell it now. He used to tell this tell this to me this joke, and I told it to an actor once. And he said when we were filming this, the, we were doing a film, and he said, "Jesus, I must get that into the film." And then he told us he tells the story in the film, tells the the joke in the film. There, there was a context for it, and my mother saw the film, and she said, "I really thought that joke was funny," and I said, "You told me that joke." Um, you've told me that joke several <laughs> times. She's completely forgotten it, and it was very, uh, you know, it was very making fun of, of a priest. The joke, and uh, so, uh, so you know, I found that, and also Jimmy's script, um, the kind of women he wrote about as well. You know, working class women. Uh, they are uh, um, the, his experience of of uh, of, uh, of those women are. A bit different than mine in a way, and some of the rewrites reflect that, I think. But uh, he just he did tend to romanticize uh, women. Uh, actually, I, uh, print don't print this, please, if because it, uh, it's, it's a bit it's a bit against, it's a bit unfair on Jimmy because he's done a fantastic job uh, uh, to create these characters. Because that's why that we have that cast because uh, he created these characters. Whatever we did with them in pre uh, subsequent drafts, the characters. Um, Stood the test of time, so to speak. And there's always hope. Peace. That's what I hope for.
If you enjoy videos that follow your values like ours and you want to help us continue, uh, go to movieguide.org slash donate because we're actually a nonprofit. You may not know that, but we're working in Hollywood every day to help families have more choices that follows their values. And also subscribe right now.